Gates listed as the third string quarterback. There he is. He's also first into the locker room. He caught a touchdown. His only catch of the year. Coleman takes it at the two. The veteran at the 15. And out to the 27 yard line. Almost lost the football as Aaron Mitchell, number 34, made the tackle for Dallas. The first half statistics, very impressive. We saw a lot of offense, Merlin. I think the most impressive thing may be the fact that we've seen 472 yards of offense collectively. It has been an offensive explosion. And look at the numbers on the Dallas side. 14 for 17 passing for Staubach. And of course, the big number on the Oilers side, 200 yards rushing. Boy, that's a, those are big numbers. Let's see if they can sustain. If they can, this is going to be a great offensive side of the game. Great offensive game, both sides. Campbell, who had 122 yards rushing and two long touchdowns in the first half, gets the first call to open the second half, and he's out to about the 33-yard line, where it'll be second down and six. Larry Cole made the tackle. Earl Campbell in only his second season, and I'm sure for many of the tacklers around the NFL, it feels as if he's been here for a career. I liked uh, Pete Wysocki, the linebacker with the Redskins, comment, tackling Earl Campbell sure does reduce your IQ. He'll pound on you. Double wing, Campbell the only man behind Pastorini, and he gets the ball and has the speed but can't outrun Kyle, who finally drags him down close to a first down at the 39. As impressive as Campbell is, he can't succeed without great blocking. We'd like to take you down into the pits to watch Leon Gray, number 74, who just blasted Harvey Martin, number 79, almost put him on his back on that last play. Look at it right here. Number 79, Harvey Martin, but that's number 74, Leon Gray, taking an all-pro back and almost parking him in his own defensive backfield. That's some fine offensive thrust from the offensive line. And did you see Campbell? Kyle hit him six yards before Campbell went down. First down at the 40, Campbell again. He's got five, he's got eight more yards. Earl Campbell celebrating his own Thanksgiving as he's devouring that Dallas defense. Let's go down on field level. Again, it will show you the awesome power and quickness right there. The ability to cut behind those blocks, take the smallest gap. Not much room there, but enough for Earl Campbell. Gets it all the way down to the 48-yard line, second and two. Renfro and Merkins are the wide receivers on the wings. Merkins in motion. On second and two, Campbell, first down, and look at him. Girl underneath the pile to the 47 of Dallas. Oh, we had a little correction on our quiz. Guido Merkins is not the only listed quarterback who has caught a touchdown pass. We'll give you that information in a moment as Harvey Martin. Harvey Martin being driven down the field there. That's actually 76, Larry Bethay, too, as Martin shot quickly up the field, opened a little bit of a space. But they driven off the ball, and Earl Campbell submarine that time. It looked like he just dove about two inches off the ground, made the first down yardage. I mean, first and ten. Something happened over here. What, the, what are they doing, Dick? I think they need a, another football or the chain gang. They're motion for someone to get out of the way. Well, anyway, to update, Guido Merkins, who is listed as the third-string quarterback for the Oilers, has caught a touchdown pass, but he's not the only one. Our friend Bob Carney is called from Miami. Bob Carney wanted to correct you, Dick. Actually, Hardy, who plays tight end for them, has also the number four quarterback, has three touchdowns on the year, and has a couple of snaps at quarterback. So Bruce Hardy is ahead of Guido Merkins in the quarterback touchdown department. Well, thanks to Bob for calling in. Bruce Hardy. Merkins in motion on first down. A pump fake to Merkins. Pass to Rini wide open. Renfro at the 20. He got a block from the official and goes in for a touchdown. Renfro used the official as a screen and scores. A double fake, and then the throw to Renfro left alone. Pass to Rainey to Renfro. Well, we just got through talking about the great passing of Roger Stavak. Pass to Rainey gonna do some of his own right here. There's Renfro's father. Well, Renfro, great all-pro. He must be standing and applauding the efforts of his son right there. And, of course, Mike Barber also happy on that sideline. Bump Phillips, what a great play. That long pump fake. Throws that defensive secondary. Gave him time to get that ball into an open Mike Barber, and he did the rest of it. Not Mike Barber. Renfro. Mike Renfro. Dad Ray Renfro looking on. Oh, he missed the extra 
point. The usually reliable Tony Frisch hits the upright, and that could change the complexion of the game. Let's see the touchdown again as Pastorini round Mike Renfro wide open over the middle after the double fake. Watch the fake of the screen right there, the long pump action, and that's just enough to give Renfro a chance to break into the open. He does a great job. Watch the official now on the side of the screen, left side of the screen. Renfro cuts back behind, gets a chance then to get into the end zone. Renfro again as we isolate on him. Downfield, he gets Harris retreating. Harris lost the receiver, simply lost him. He's going to be way off to the side. Renfro breaking in beside the official. Waltz is into the end zone all by himself. Mike Renfro, his first touchdown catch of the year. Pastorini had time to throw that. And again, it was the fake of what appeared to be a screen that set that play up. Beautiful play acting. But even the first fake to Campbell, the fact that Campbell, everyone is so cognizant of him, he faked to Campbell on the run, that did one job of freezing. Then the fake to Perkins in the flat did another job, and then Renfro free over the middle. Well, I think Cliff Harris focused on that, what he thought was a screen out there, simply lost his man, had to drift back, and that set the play up for the Houston Oilers. Steve Wilson returns the kick out to the 28-yard line, and Dallas trailing. 23-21 has the football for the first time in the second half, and we'll see just how important that missed extra point by Frisch happens to be. You see the feeling right there from Tony Fritch. He's still upset. He doesn't miss many kicks, and he has the confidence of his teammates, but, well, if they can continue to play the way they have offensively, that kick may not be important. Roger Staubach with a sensational first half. While the Cowboys have had their problems, you can't say that about Staubach. This is his best year in the eyes of many Dallas observers. He hits Pearson first down at the 41-yard line. Oh, out of bounds, he said. Oh, inbounds. As he waved the time out as Pearson left the field of play. Curly Culp on top of Staubach uh, as he threw that football actually delivered a blow to the top of Staubach's helmet. Uh, lucky he didn't get called for a penalty. The Oilers needed only five plays to go the 71 yards and take the lead 23-21. Well, Dallas opened the first half with a big touchdown, and Houston answered. Uh, Houston's opened the second half with a big touchdown. Let's see if Dallas can answer. First down at the 41 for the Cowboys. Saldy, the tight end in motion. It's Newhouse sweeping left and gains about three to the 44-yard line. Greg Bingham, 54, made the tackle. One of the officials knocked down the linesman on the near side. Newhouse, those huge thighs. He's built a lot like Earl Campbell. Robert, 5'10 and 2'15. He buys 36 inch waist pants. Because, and his waist is only 31, but he needs the 36 pants and then he alters them so he can get his thighs through those leg spaces. This officiating business is getting kind of tough. Tony Kramer, one of the officials uh, normally with this crew, is watching this game today as he was injured last week. One of the officials on the sideline apparently banged up a little bit. Uh, Bill Ross, the headlinesman. Giving it. him a drink of water down there and patting him on the back. You okay? All right, go back in the ball game. <laughs> Quick look at the officials. Not so easy to try and stay out of the way, not to get caught. Staubach looking to the sideline, getting a few words of instruction there from Tom Landry, the offensive staff. Key to the officials is Merlin, they're in a position where they can't always watch all the players. They're watching areas and don't always see men coming in on their right side. Specific responsibilities, Dick, and they, they do it well. I have to commend them. They've done a good job of this game so far today. Second down, seven. Out of the eye. Fake to Dorsett. Sabak driven down at the 37 yard line. It was whistled dead earlier, but an oiler is injured on the play. The second sack of Staubach, and he acts as though he's okay. Let's check the condition of Andy Doris, number 69. Andy Doris still on the ground. I think he'll be all right. May just have had the wind knock out of him. But you saw Staubach take advantage of the oiler blitz earlier in the game with a touchdown. On that particular play, the blitz came again. Staubach did not have an open receiver. Watch it here. 51 Ted Thompson and 54 Bingham coming. 
right here. That's Thompson, 51, breaking clean. Doris actually got hit by Elvin Bethea, uh, number 65. Looked like Bethea in wrapping around Staubach caught Doris in the stomach with his hand. Time out while they attend to the injured Andy Doris. We have 10 minutes and 46 seconds left in the third quarter. And Houston 23. Dallas 21, 10 minutes plus remaining in the third quarter. Cowboys on third and 15 from their own 36. Out of the spread. They overload the right side. Now they balance it off. Stavok so good on third down. He's got some running room. It's incomplete to Preston Pearson. And Stavok was not beyond the line of scrimmage, but very close to it. Greg Bingham on the coverage. Today's attendance, 65,068 tickets sold. Nearly 64,000 are here. 1,171 stayed home and had their dinner and watched us on NBC. Greg Bingham, number 54, absolutely doing a great job tracking Stavak to the sideline. Stavak knew he wasn't get a, getting, going to get away. Tried to get it to his favorite receiver in that situation. Preston Pearson, all to no avail. Danny White going to kick it away. Had to punt only twice in the first half. Merkins is deep for Houston at the 25. High end of Rand Merkins, fair catch at the 35 of Houston. So the Oilers get good field position. White looked as if he had thoughts about possibly doing something other than punting. Timeout, 10 minutes, 10 seconds left in the third quarter here in Irving, Texas, where the Oilers from the south Lead the hometown Cowboys by two. Well, our crack team of producers for Sports World say this may be the top show of the year coming up Saturday. Hope you'll watch it. Figure skating, weightlifting from Leningrad, legends of bowling. It's a delightful show. We hope you'll gather around with the family. Four o'clock on Saturday. Oilers ball with the lead, 23-21. Middle of the third quarter here in Irving, Texas. Earl Campbell plowing out another five to the 40-yard line. It was acquired, the rights the Oilers acquired from Tampa Bay for tight end Jimmy Giles and three draft picks. Cliff Harris made that last stop. What a day for Campbell already, and there's still almost 10 minutes left in the third quarter. One of the other teams that talked to Tampa Bay about those rights was the Dallas Cowboys. Can you imagine Campbell and Dorsett in the same backfield? Mm, that's frightening. Campbell again. No game. They were waiting for him that time. Larry Cole, 63, and Mike Eggman, 58, collaborated on the stop. Campbell, with two touchdowns today, Merlin, is now just one away from the Houston record set by Billy Groman back in 1961. 18 for Groman. And he's just two away from the NFL record for rushing touchdowns. Jimmy Taylor had 19 back in 62, so Campbell is on a record course. Earl coming out of the game. As they send Rob Carpenter in. Pass reading probably to pass as he spreads everyone. Got his receivers all over the field. Third and five from the 40. Good protection. Complete to Barber. He fumbles. Was he down? Yes. Cowboys have the ball, but that scramble to no avail. First down at the 50. Barber was down. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. The News Source, KTVB, Channel 7, Boise. Dick Hanberg with Merlin Olson. Rob Carpenter, 26, not Barber, 86, made that reception out of the backfield. It gives Houston a first down. Ball dissected by the 50-yard line. Tom Landry's Cowboys have lost three of four, and they admit they should be four straight defeats. They pulled one out against the Giants, and they trail Houston today, 23-21. Side carrying tacklers to the 44 for six yards. When Dallas has been able to stop Campbell, they usually have forced him to turn toward the sideline, which really takes his momentum away from him. And they've made some good stops on him when they've done that. He turned back up the field on that one and just literally bulldozed two or three of the Cowboys, made an extra three or four yards before he finally hit the turf. A.O. Bum Phillips got that nickname from a younger sister who couldn't say brother. It came out Bumble, and short for Bumble was Bum. Second down four. Campbell again. Did he fumble or did he just?
just slip away. He slipped away to the 40 and close to a first down. He looked as if he was stopped. He just simply hit the pile, kept his balance, made another stab at it, and it looks like he picked up the first down. Dick. They run a formation with Campbell being the lone back. Called, they would call it an ace formation. Put two wings up on the outside. A lot of teams wouldn't be able to run out of that formation. They need the blocking of a back. But number 34, Earl Campbell, can run from it. He makes big gains from it, and it forces some spreading of the defense. Now there's his belt buckle, 34. Looks like a heavyweight championship belt. And they figure that when he has that ball, he's a champ. First down at the Dallas 40. Again, double wing, give to Campbell. He gets about four yards. It'll be second and six. Larry Cole spearheaded the defensive charge. You know the nice thing you hear good things about players and I like Bum Phillips comment Merlin last year after Campbell is a rookie of the year and the NFL rushing champion won 30 pro awards. But Bum said what I remember most was Earl's team play. Well I think I said earlier and I, I would like to say it again. I think the special thing to underline in describing Earl Campbell is that he is unselfish. And that is difficult for a superstar to do when he is getting a, when he is getting as much acclaim as Campbell has been getting. Some have not carried it quite so well. Second and six at the 36. Campbell. And they finally are able to wrestle him down at the 33 where it'll be third down and three. And in fact, part of the now departed Thomas Henderson's problems were that he did not handle his notoriety quite as well as this man Earl Campbell who gets up slowly but we've seen him do that before that's taking a Nate count before he goes back and starts jabbing again. Well, he's had a lot of work today. He did come into this game relatively rested. He only played a half last week against Cincinnati. Dallas would have liked to see him go the whole game against Cincinnati. He only carried uh, about what 18 19 times in the game for over 100 yards. Though. They're in four down territory. This time it's Tim Wilson, the only back behind pass for any. And Wilson does not get the first down. He gets a yard. It'll be fourth and two. So Houston taking Campbell out and perhaps Bum Phillips hoping to give the Cowboys a look that they throw the ball. Did not. And the Cowboys were ready. Cole, Brunig, Harris all in on the stop. Bum Phillips uh, making his decision on the sideline. Apparently Gonna to go for, go for it. it. Well, when you've got a tool like Earl Campbell, and he is a short yardage tool, on third and one to three, he's averaged over five yards a carry. That is one of the most unbelievable stats I have ever seen in short yardage carry. This is a momentum play. If Dallas stops Houston, they can get some force of their own. Fourth and two. Campbell fumbles. Oh. Dallas will take over on down. You saw the official motion. Houston recovered. It doesn't matter. Dallas gets the ball on down. Strange, Dick, how football games can turn on little things. Except for two feet not coming down in the first half for Caster, the game would have been tried tied 21-21. Now it's a... Uh, Earl Campbell not quite getting a hold of the football as he started into the line. Didn't have any chance to go for the first down. As Campbell comes off, we're going to take a break. Four minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Dallas Cowboys will have the football when we come back. Campbell, a little trouble with a handoff. Does not get the first down. And Dallas will start from their own 34. Oilers 23, Dallas 21. Hi, I'm Dan Pastorini. There's a full schedule of football on NBC this weekend, and I'm particularly interested in the Pittsburgh-Cleveland game. Please be watching. Thank you, Dan. That, of course, will be at 12.30 NFL 79 this Sunday. The Browns and Steelers at Three Rivers. Merlin and I will be at Denver. The Broncos seek revenge against the Oakland Raiders. Cowboys, 23-21. They trail the Oilers as Staubach takes over on his own 34. Pearson in motion to the inside and Staubach going to throw. Secondary target is Billy Joe Dupre. He's at the 50 and all the way to the Oiler 47. They still can't get Dupre down. I like to talk about Billy Joe. He's a, not only an outstanding athlete from Michigan State, but he's a gentleman and he's a humanitarian and in fact is one of the five finalists for the YMCA Brian Piccolo Humanitarian Award. 
That is in the case uh, the kind of man he is. He goes off uh, as you look at his shoes, and he has plenty of those in his locker. You'll see in just a moment. <laughs> that is just the supply of one man, Billy Joe Dupre's shoes. There is his street shoes on the outside, the alligators. A reverse to Pearson. 50, 45, 40. It gains six yards. I'd like to mention the other men who are finalists along with Dupre for that honor. David Winfield of the San Diego Padres, Archie Manning, the quarterback of the Saints, Austin Carr of the Cavaliers, and Greg Lazinski of the Phils, along with Dupre, are the finalists for that Piccolo Award. And on this day of Thanksgiving, where we take time to think about our families and people we care about and helping others, nice to note that the football athlete is involved in projects away from the field that are meaningful as well. Second and four at the 41 of Houston. Dorsett inside then outside. Almost fumbled at the 39. The fumble occurred after the ball. And while we're on that topic of contributing to the others, he'd never say it, but Merlin Olson involved in the multiple sclerosis drives and key member of efforts in Los Angeles. He flew without sleep the other night to get here to Dallas after a big MS dinner of the Seattle Seahawks up in the Seattle area and uh, I commend you for the time you spend away and I know that you've met a lot of good friends who also are are contributing to that cause. Thank you Dick. Uh, I, I think one of the nice thing about athletes uh, one of the nice things that we see in other cities too they are willing to give something back. Uh, we do get so much from this great game and I I'm glad to see athletes all over the country welcome uh, welcoming an opportunity to give something back. Third down and two and Dorsett has a first down and more as he spins down to the Houston 27. The Cowboys trailing for the first time in the game, marching deep into Oiler territory, a first down at the 27. One of the things that uh, the Cowboys have been concerned about, they feel that Dorsett has been too quick to take that outside move. You saw it uh, on the play earlier when he broke to the outside. There apparently was a hole inside. Dorsett stopped for almost no gain. But you can see why he likes to do it here. I believe that play was designed to go outside. Dorsett just taking the quick dip using his great speed to get out there. 33 J.C. Wilson, 32 Vernon Perry actually finally brought him down. Boy, Niehaus a terrific block right on the corner to help Dorsett and Newhouse unable to gain his footing. He may have to go into Billy Joe's locker and get him <laughs> some more suction. One of the things that happens on this turf, Dick, uh, when it, once it gets wet, the sun doesn't get in here and this turf will stay wet uh, for the rest of the year until the heat of summer. And this field has been wet a couple of times this year. As it gets cooler, the moisture comes to the surface. It does tend to get a little bit slippery. Of course, uh, the fans are protected by the roof, but the opening larger than the size of the field itself allows the elements to figure. Second down, 13. Staubach with a hot hand under a blitz. Good call to Dorsett, but he goes down. He was not down by the impetus of a tackler, and now he is. Actually went down without being touched by an oiler. That was a play that had possible touchdown written on it because Staubach with the Oilers on a blitz had nothing but blockers and doors set up field and one oiler. Just a great play and a great call. Staubach doing a good job of play acting, sucked everybody in. They put great pressure on him, but they opened up for the middle screen, and had it not been, what's Culp? Get an idea. Culp is, he's sold. He believes that this is a pass. Breaking clean. Look at it. A blitz. Again, a perfect time to have that play called. Culp forced the ball a little high, and it was number 52, Robert Brazil, that made the big stopping play in there. Cowboys in a spread. Third down and 19 from the 36. Salty has the catch at the 27, but that just gets the Cowboys back to the original line of scrimmage on this sequence of play. So it's fourth down and 10. Dallas unable to convert on that third down. So there's six of 10 for the day. And that is the end of the third quarter. Now the drama begins to build here at Texas Stadium. 15 minutes to go between these two teams battling to stay in first place in their respective divisions. Houston 23, Dallas 21. 
mandate no place like home and from Texas Stadium Dick Kendrick with Merlin Olsen we open the fourth quarter on a play that may decide the lead the Oilers 23 Dallas 21 but Rafael Septien who has connected only once in that 40 to 49 yard range although he has kicked two outside 50 will try a 44 yard attempt out of Danny White's hold this for the lead. Long enough. Good. Dallas 24, Houston 23. Well, the pressure's on the place kicker. Uh, Rafael Septien not only has practiced hard physically, but there's a whole emotional training that a man must go through to be an outstanding kicker. What goes through my mind when you go over there and kick uh, the last second field goal in order to win or lose the game, it goes through my mind is that it's a very lot of pressure situation, but the way I handle it is thinking about in a positive way by thinking that we're ahead 35-0, and I should be able to just go and relax and smile and enjoy the winning. Yeah, he's smiling after that one, 24-23. I remember as a rookie with the Rams, Merlin Olsen, when you were playing, did an interview with him two games before the end of the year, and he says, boy, I sure thought those St. Louis Redskins were tough. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to know too much. <laughs> he has made some adjustments to the game since then. And of course that extra point missed by his counterpart Tony French has become a very important factor in the one, one point lead for the Dallas Cowboys. Just seconds into the final quarter Septien's kick takes a lateral bound and out of bounds for the procedure penalty and Raphael will have to kick it from his 30 yard line. Tony Frisch who doesn't miss many has a reputation of being the most consistent kicker has a field goal today but a missed extra point is a difference in the game at the moment. Frisch who has won three games this year in the final seconds two of them in overtime for the Oilers with that missed extra point not likely would have an extra 15 minutes today. Not unless we could change to Canadian rules <laughs> that we might get a rouge. Yeah, yeah we could get a rouge. <laughs> Ron Coleman and Carter Hartwig are joined by Tim Wilson at the moment deep downfield and they may be putting on a play Wilson coming back to talk to his two deep return men. We saw that ball hang right on the sideline Dick. That's the same thing that happened to Hartwig earlier in the game and you remember he stood there debating finally took the ball and accidentally stepped out of bounds on that play. He should have let it go out of bounds as they did on this one. Take the five yard penalty against the kicker possibly set up a deep return give them a chance to get good field position on the return. Septien, who tended southwest Louisiana. Short High kick. but short. And that one's going to go out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So the Cowboys now will kick from the 25-yard line, and Septien disgusted with himself. Well, Septien uh, not going to draw any raves from the coaching staff on the other sideline. They're going to march it back another five. Uh, not to alibi for him, but it did appear that he was trying to kick left and then kick right not kick the ball down the middle that by intent he is trying to kick toward the sidelines not quite that far however I'm sure the Dallas Cowboys have a directional coverage on in other words uh, wanting to know which side the ball will be kicked to and asking Septian to kick specifically to one side or the other on that particular play he, he hung the ball high had a receiver been able to get there and take a hold of it he would have received the ball in about the 30 yard line possibility then for a big return you now Raphael's father was the captain of the Mexico soccer team, the Mexican football team, and two different World Cups. So he comes from very talented heritage. He was recruited to Southwest Louisiana on the recommendation of a tennis player from Mexico City who had gone there. And they needed a kicker. And he says, I know a guy who kicks the soccer ball pretty well. That was Septien, and he got a football scholarship. He drills Ooh, this he one. He got that one. Taken at the 18. It's Coleman at the 30, the 35, and out to the 42. So those two penalties did give the Oilers good field position and an excellent return as the kick was low. Don't forget, folks, tonight on NBC, Gary Coleman and a, is a cosmic whiz kid. Buck Rogers, 25th century. Then a doctor's greed causes a boy's death. Outraged Quincy wants to kill the system. And Kate discovers a corpse that walks on. Kate loves a mystery. That's all tonight on NBC. Both wide receivers to the right. The Oilers trail 24-23.
Earl Campbell. Oh, he draws about nine white jerseys to that spot off tackle. John Dutton was the first man there. Campbell is now in first place in the NFL with his rushing activity today. 122 yards in the first half put him up over the 1,200 mark. In fact, he's close to 1,300 yards on the season at this point. Second down eight. Wide receivers to the left. Ken Burrows back in the game. Campbell breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. Well, he turned a no gain into three, and had he broken one more, he had no one else left downfield. One of the unique things about Earl Campbell is his body lean as he runs. You'll hear him talk about stay low to the ground. Watch Earl Campbell. Comes in, takes a hit from Larry Bethea right there, number 76, and is so low that Bethea just can't grab a hold of him. Comes out of that one, and it's the third man. Bounces off a second. It was finally the third man after slowing down that got him to the ground. From the perspective of 53, Bob Brunig, watch him trying to fight the blockers. 76, Morris Towns drives him back. And he might say, thank goodness, I didn't have to get my head on Earl Campbell. Injured Ed Fisher leaves the field, the right guard for the Oilers as we take a break, 13-38 remaining. The Oilers trail by one. George Rainer, number 64, back from the injured list, has replaced Ed Fisher at right guard. Key third and four from the 47 for Houston. Fake to Campbell. Pastorini has his arm hit, and it's incomplete. Aaron Kyle closest to the ball. It was Larry Cole, 63, who deflected the pass, hitting the arm of Pastorini. Harvey Martin was in on the play as well, and the Cowboy fans are on their feet. Let's take a quick look at George Rainer, number 64. His first snap, as you said, since returning, difficult to come right off the bench. Step in against the man who's warm. Larry Cole simply gets by him here, lifts him up, and gets the shot right there on Pastorini. Takes the blow on that arm, and you've got to believe that some concern as to whether Pastorini may have been bounced hard enough to hurt that arm again. We'll give you that Olympic address right after this kick by Parsley. Wilson and Manning are deep. Parsley hits another beauty. Wilson's going to let it go. And it goes into the end zone. You saw Manning say, let it go, and it does. First down at the 20 for the Cowboys. Again, here's the address again for your tax-deductible contribution to help our American Olympic athletes. It's U.S. Olympics, Post Office Box 1980N, Cathedral Station, Boston, Mass., 02118. Hope you'll feel a part of the Olympic program by your contribution. Dallas with a lead, 24-23, with 13 minutes remaining in this Thanksgiving football treat from Irving, Texas. And some of the folks are digging into the pumpkin pie right now. Ooh, a little whipped cream on top. Don't say that, Vic. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Newhouse, the only back behind Staubach, and now Dorsett shifts with him. Staubach on first down to throw. Going long for Hill. Well covered. Who's got it? Houston, 33-yard line, J.C. Wilson, who was a roommate and friend of Tony Dorsett at Pittsburgh. So the Oilers continue the takeaway. They lead the AFC a plus 15, and there are three more today and have not given it up. I really don't understand that play. Roger put that ball in the air. It was up there all day. Maybe he just figured that Hill would go up and out, muscle the defender. But Wilson does a great job of just grabbing that football, bringing it down. Hill wanted to go for the double reception rule, which would give the ball to the offense. The official there ruled it, that the defender had taken control of the ball first. Number 33 would be credited with a, an interception, and Houston has the football. Renfro in motion, first down throw by Pastorini to Renfro incomplete at the 43-yard line. Well, the pass did serve almost the same purpose as a kick. But it does give the Oilers the ball back immediately. And with plenty of time, 12-49 left. A one-point game, 24-23 Cowboys. J.C. Wilson, good-looking guy. He had on his uh, black cowboy hat last night. He, uh, in that big smile, you were telling them some stories about the first black cowboy. 
It's <laughs> kind of interesting. I don't know if that was fact or fiction, but it's no, was I'm telling him the truth. Telling the truth about a bulldog who used to bite the ear or the lip of those uh, stairs when he took him down. That'd be at least 15 yards in this game. <laughs> Campbell <laughs> out to the 35-yard line where it'll be third down and eight, and the Cowboy fans are spurring on that defense. There's J.C. and his black outfit. He looks like he's ready to ride the range. Ken Burrow uh, in the lineup. We haven't seen Barber since his injury, and the, the Oilers have been hurt today at that receiving core with some injuries. I'm sure have limited it to some degree the kinds of things that Pastorini has been able to do out on the field. Burrow comes limping out now, even though it's a pass situation. Ronnie Coleman is playing the slot left. Outside your picture, far left, is Richard Castor with Renfro to the right. Third and eight from the 35. Pressure's on. Pastorini guns it and completes it. What a throw by Pastorini to Barber. Mike Barber, the tight end back in there. And from a crowd, Pastorini shoots a dart. Well, we said we hadn't seen much of Barber, but uh, he is definitely well and alive. Pastorini stepping up, eluding a tremendous rush. Bethea, number 76, has a shot. Martin gets a piece. Pastorini zips it right there just in time. The ball thrown to Barber, who had two safeties draped all over him. Completion, rather remarkable at both ends. Good pass, great reception. Let's see if Houston can capitalize, keep that ball moving. Boy, the offensive caliber of play today has been superb. Campbell. Ooh. He had a head of steam. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is a punishing run, not a punishing tackle. That punishes the defense. He does get your attention. <laughs> From the end zone, you might get an appreciation for the force with which Campbell hit the line of scrimmage. That looked like Canadian football. He looked like he had a full, full head of steam. Watch him as he rounds off and comes back up the inside. They closed the hole. They didn't even slow him down. He went four or five yards with all those bodies stacked on top of him. Second and four at the Dallas 48. 10 minutes, 45 seconds left. Houston with the ball, trails by one. Wilson on a trap. Close to the first down. I believe he has it inside the 30 to check at the 44 of Dallas. John Dutton and Larry Cole made the tackle on that left side, a new left side of the Dallas line with Dutton starting for the first time and Cole in a tackle. They played well today. They have played well. On that particular play, if you wonder why there was a little room inside, they faked outside to Campbell first. I don't blame people for leaning that direction. First down by Wilson near the 43-yard line. Caster started off the field, stays in, and Burrow now comes out as Tony Frisch with lots on his mind. Strolling the sidelines. They say about for not Pastorini calls time. There's some confusion in the huddle, and Pastorini will spend a precious timeout in this situation with 10 minutes and 15 seconds left. Irving, Texas, the scene. 24-23 Dallas. First down, Houston at the Dallas 43. 10 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Dallas leads 24-23. in motion Campbell with the ball oh, almost fumbled and he still picks up a couple of yards Campbell with those two yards now has unofficially 182 today that's the best rushing performance by any AFC back bettering Campbell's own mark 166 yards against the Redskins on opening day and Campbell now is only 15 yards shy of the best game in the NFL this year that by Wilbert Montgomery of Philadelphia 197 versus the Browns. So Campbell, this is just not an ordinary day you're watching, folks. He's having a big afternoon and on his way to the best of the NFL year. Campbell again. Cracking to the 39. Oh, he's paying the price. Every time he has the ball, he gets hit from every direction. Bruning, first man to get there, 53. Certainly doesn't fit the image of that middle linebacker, at least the image of the Nitschkes and the Butkuses or even the Jack Lamberts. And Rooney is the kind of the soft-spoken, easygoing, guitar-playing middle linebacker, very bright. And very aggressive. And he's not afraid to hit you. He may not be physically as, as strong or as big as many linebackers around, but he'll give you everything he has. Key third down. Houston is 5 for 11. Third down conversions.
big play for the defense, too. I think Pastorini banking on the fact that everyone would be keying on number 34, Campbell, but he was surprised. Uh, they just played outstanding defense, wouldn't take the bite, stopped Carpenter. That's a big, big play, and I think I think uh, Mike Ditka, special teams coach, has said, don't believe they're going to kick it. Check them out in there. Parsley with Bingham, the up back. Manning. They say out of bounds at the 10-yard line, and a flag is down at the 13. Flag right. went down early. It's quite possible we have an illegal block down there. Or a uh, receiver uh, downfield uh, too soon. Wait, it may have, may have touched the Cowboys the way the Oilers are acting. Or wait, the penalty against Dallas could give Houston a first down. Oh, what a costly air. 12 men on the field for the Dallas Cowboys. That'll be a five-yard penalty. That'll be a first down. Tom Landry and a team who pride themselves on their precision. That's a very criti critical error. Unbelievable. Landry just simply explaining to you, Merlin, I don't know what it is, but it's some little thing always goes wrong, and it's never the same. I'm sure that's a new one. 12 in on the field. Gives the Oilers a first down at the 32. Jordan McCarter signals the illegal procedure. Due to the many Dallas injuries, or the fact that Henderson probably on the special teams and not here. Well, Houston still has to take advantage of the opportunity. They have the ball, they have it on the 33, they still need the points to go ahead in this game. 24 23 Dallas. Fake to Campbell. Plenty of time. Burrow. Touchdown. Ken Burrow. Defense apparently stopping an Oiler drive. Ken Burrow injured, a sore back, right back with the big play, and he played Benny Barnes. You can't believe what he did to Barnes. Delaying just enough to keep Barnes out of position, taking the ball on a pretty, pretty pass from Dan Pastorini. What a great touchdown. Burrow shaking up an injured back in the first half, returns to catch his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Here's Frisch's try for point. He missed the last one. That one right down the middle. Timeout as Tony Frisch makes it 30 to 24 Houston. Let's watch Burrow again. He used his hands a little bit, didn't he? We've got to show you this pass. The, the, the fake right there to Campbell held it, but watch Burrow. You'll just see him stop briefly right here. Just kind of hung in the air and then broke away. Quickly again, another shot of Ken Burrow. And maybe you can see how he forced. Maybe you can see what he does on the reception here. Watch him now. He'll get behind Barnes. He sees the ball. Slow down right there. You see him? Forced Barnes to lose position and then accelerated to catch the football. That is such a smart play. It's no wonder that Burrow is one of the all-time great deep threats of the NFL. And there was no extra use of the hands. He just had them out there as a warding off a defender in basketball. Timeout. Houston is in the lead again. Dallas gets the ball after Ken Burrow's touchdown reception from Dan Pastorini. Houston leads 30 to 24. Frisch to kick it away. Here it comes. Bounces it down. 16. It's a reverse. Wilson to Brinson. And Larry Brinson takes it to the 31. Let's go back. What does an avid horticulturist, which Burrow is, do when he catches a touchdown pass? Well, here he is. Let's watch him catch the pass again first. And again, watch this very bright move right there. Just slowing down enough to get that position. Accelerating great catch. And then a horticulturist, well, he plants it. <laughs> that ought to grow. Boy, did he ever. Dallas with the football with 7 minutes and 43 seconds. Let's see if they can come back. This is Stavok at his best. He's at the 31 and gives the door set. Good blocking and a fine tackle by Stemrick to drop Dorset at the 36. A gain of five. Second down, five yards to go. These Cowboys have not been 
fair weather performers. They have won three games in the final two minutes and have been brought back by Stavak. So the Oilers aren't safe yet. That six-point lead is less than a touchdown. And, boy, I'd say that extra point still kind of looms up there as a critical factor in this ballgame. Larry, Larry Cole, Cole yeah. Joe Palooka, they called him when he first came to the big leagues from the University of Hawaii. The throw is complete to Dorsett, breaks a tackle, and gets the first down at the 46. Greg Bingham is standing over there with about a third of Dorsett's jersey, waving it like a flag. He, he got the jersey, he didn't get Dorsett. Again, Stavak looking away quickly back, trying to isolate Dorsett. Watch it right there. There you see it. Took about half the jersey, did not get Dorsett. Ted Washington did, but not until Dorsett has a first down out of the Dallas 46. Plenty of time, six and a half minutes left. This may come down to who gets the ball last. Dorsett in motion. Newhouse. And Newhouse running gingerly, I thought. Merlin, he still has been bothered by that muscle injury in the leg. Uh, then it became a, they examined after a couple of weeks, a stress fa fracture. And for the last two years, Newhouse really hasn't had healthy legs under him. You see how close the Euler decisions have been this year. They, too, have come from behind to win in the final seconds. We have two teams that will play it all the way to the wire. I'm afraid we may delay a few holiday dinners if things keep going the way they're going. At least the digestive process of some of these fans in the state of Texas. Second and seven. Staubach is back in the pattern. Pearson, first down at the Houston 36. The official motioning that he was inbounds, which was an unusual call. The clock is running. But I don't see how he could call that in play. He got hit one step before he went out of bounds. One of the great marks of a quarterback is being willing to hang on to that football until the last possible minute. You see the price they pay. Watch it again as you see Stavak taking all the time he can to give his receiver time to clear. Puts it right on target. Pearson taking it out of bounds with the first down. And the clock continued to run. Now down to five minutes. Under five. First down. Dallas trails by six. Another big game, a native of Chicago, and operates a chain of car washes, does Greg? And he was chasing Newhouse and brings him down at the 33 after a gain of three. Clock ticking away down to 428, 427. Lots of pressure here on the defensive team for the Houston Oilers. They would love to come up with that football. Or at least force Dallas into just a field goal. Sabak. Intercepted twice, only two of his passes, two of 24, have hit the ground. Dorsett hit in the backfield. That play, slow getting off. And it was because of good defensive penetration by Andy Doris, who was injured earlier. But the seven-year veteran of New Mexico State works in the New Orleans Police Department in the offseason. Used to play with the Saints. Made a big defensive play, and it's now at the 36-yard line, third and ten. He has not lost three games in a row since 1974. That's the year the Cowboys did not make the playoffs. Out of the spread, third and ten. Incomplete. A little too low for Jay Saldy. And now on fourth down, Landry has his toughest decision of this game. Houston Oilers coming up with a big play defensively. I think that's the worst pass we've seen Roger throw all day, except maybe for the one he threw when he was going to the ground. And the first time we've seen him throw badly when he did not have pressure. Dorsett comes in as Pearson also in. Except the end will not have a field goal chance. The Cowboys with three and a half minutes are going for it. Hill to the left, Pearson to the right, and now Saldi splits away to the right. Out of the spread, he needs 10. He gets it. Tony Hill, first down at the 20. They say that 
Tom Landry is an unemotional coach. Watch him right here. There it is. He knows that that one's going to be caught. The drive is alive on the 20-yard line. Staubach in control. They want that touchdown. Boy, at Staubach, third down or fourth down conversions as he's up at the 20 of Houston. Two minutes and 40 seconds left. Dallas trails by six. Brazil all in on the stop as the clock ticks down toward the two minute warning. Dallas may get one playoff before the official two minute warning. So for the Oilers, should Dallas drive in to score, they won't have much time to come back themselves. And the missed extra point does loom bigger and bigger. Big defensive play, great pursuit along the line. They tried to cut back, but the Oilers would not allow it. Second, nine and a half. They're not going to get a ball. playoff. Nope. They're not even going to take wow. the play. They don't take a play. They let 26 seconds click off the clock. There is the official two-minute timeout. Two minutes left in this on a Thanksgiving evening now in the Dallas area. The score, the Houston Oilers 30, the Dallas Cowboys 24. So be with us, Sports World Saturday, post-Thanksgiving treat, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Skating, bowling, weightlifting championships. Second down, nine. Dallas Cowboys have the football inside the Houston 20. The Oilers lead 30 to 24, just two minutes left. And the Cowboys are going to stay in the spread. Second down, nine. Good protection. Almost intercepted, then almost caught by Dorsett. It was number 51, Ted Thompson from SMU, played his college football right here in the Dallas area, who almost picked it off. Thompson did a good job of reading the quarterback on that play, came, came across high in the air, had his fingers on the football. The Houston defense has inserted Ken Kennard, number 71, in place of Curly Culp. Kennard, a, a better pass rusher if Culp is tired, and certainly one of the stars, young stars of this team. They need to get more pressure on Roger. He has had time to throw that football. They can't afford that with just a minute and 56 seconds. They have got to get some pressure on him. You also saw Ted Thompson come out and Bill Courier has replaced him. Some confusion and timeout has been called. I don't know against whom that will be charged. Against the Dallas Cowboys, Dick. 156 remaining. It's Dallas with the ball deep in Houston territory, six points behind. A lot of nervous pacing along that Houston sidelines by the offense, Tony Frisch included. He'd like to see that defense save face for him. His missed extra point gives Dallas a chance to win it. They trail by six. They have the football third down and nine at the 19. Our thanks today to Joe Costanza, our statistician Doug Adams from KXAS, Blake Burns uh, station here, NBC station in Dallas, John Nelson. Mike Weissman and Teddy Nathanson down in the truck with those excellent pictures. Pearson to the left. Both Pearsons. Drew outside. Preston in the slot. And now Preston moves back into the backfield. In the end zone. Incomplete. Tony Hill and that one just missed connections. And I think Staubach thought he should have had. Yes. His Ooh. actions tell a story. He thought he had a touchdown. There's no question that Roger felt that that could have been a completion. Watch Stavak here. Has to wait a little bit for the snap, but he has time again to throw, put that ball on target, and let's watch. He'll tell right there. He thought it could be caught. Oh, Doug. He's not going to blame anyone, though. He's a real gentleman. He's a real champion, and he's got one more shot down there. Tom Landry, who calls the plays, and he's motioning for Staubach to come over. So the Cowboys are going to spend another time out here. Well, they might, because even though there's 151 left, they have only one play to get nine yards for a first down to sustain the drive. And the other thing this has done, Merlin, should the Cowboys succeed and score with these incomplete passes, Houston would get the ball again with time to move themselves. Tony Fritz got to be feeling better, but the pressure's still building. They made it on a big fourth down call earlier, but it's tougher down here. You're down into an area where the field is not very big, and you have a lot of defenders on your people. You don't have as far to go to the football. 
tougher to pass down in this area than it is out on the field a little bit further. Staubach's going to have his hands full getting it into the end zone. i got to believe that this whole thing is built to a magnificent crescendo here in this, in this stadium, and I don't think anybody has left here to go home. I wouldn't think so. There may be a little crispy drumsticks in some of the households. Tom Landry looks to the scoreboard. It spells out the situation. Fourth and nine. A minute 51 seconds left. Ron Springs and Preston Pearson behind Staubach. Not in the spread. He's under center. Incomplete. And look at that Oilers sideline. Turkey truck. Well, the Oilers have their own Thanksgiving dance going. It appeared that Staubach's intended receiver, too well covered, he couldn't find an open man. I don't understand, though, why he didn't pull it down and try and run it or try and do something else. The ball thrown just apparently out of bounds, senseless on a fourth down play. Kind of sad in a way, a day that has been such a great one for Staubach in throwing the football to end on a play like that. Tony Fresh says, well, you know, if they just scored a touchdown, we'd have had time to get in field goal range and not a kick one for the Oilers anyway. Now, Houston trying to run out the clock. Earl Campbell just into the center of things. And Dallas, forced to use two timeouts, now spends its last. Larry Bethea made the tackle. Got to say, Dick. This has just been one fantastic football game. They don't all live to the expectations that we have for them, but coming into the top of this show, we talked about great running from Campbell and Dorsett, great passing from Staubach and Pastorini, and we have had all that and more. Let's see how the Oilers put pressure on Roger that fourth down and nine play. Staubach getting the pressure from a four-man rush does not have anyone downfield Look quickly to the sideline, just flip that ball. Would not have had much time. Andy Doris, 69, had broken clear of Rayfield Wright, number 70, the veteran at right tackle. That has to be a sad end to, to what was a very fine drive. It's been a tough week for this Dallas Cowboy organization, a tough month. And you've got to wonder what this does to Tom Landry and these Cowboys. They wanted this victory so much. The ball flying out of bounds kind of symbolizes the almost futility of their last four ball games now five ball games Campbell bowls his way out across the 25 and now the clock will run there's no way the Cowboys can stop it quick look though at Dallas they still can control their destiny if they win the rest of their games they will win their division I beg your pardon we had charged the Cowboys with a timeout that apparently must have gone against Houston so the Cowboys spend a timeout. They now have no more. 133 left. Should Dallas lose, that means Philadelphia and Washington have a chance on Sunday to move into sole possession or share first place. And meanwhile, Houston puts the pressure on the Pittsburgh Steelers. If Houston wins, the Steelers, Super Bowl champs, must beat Cleveland at home on Sunday. You'll see that game on NBC. I think it's 12:30 NFL 79 on Sunday, and that's a great way to start your football afternoon. So, with four games to go, and now only three for the Cowboys and Oilers, this one uh, a bit of a surprise. The Cowboys were favored to win, and yet Dallas, by their own admission, they won against the Giants. If they lose this one, should have lost five in a row. Most unusual for this Dallas organization. Can they rebound? Well, I think Dallas, uh, and especially Coach Landry and his staff, will spend this long week trying to ask the question and answer it. What is wrong with the Dallas Cowboys? A minute 33 left. Pastorini only needs to fall on the ball, but he gives to Earl Campbell instead. And Campbell stretching for a first down out to the 31-yard line. And it's all over now as the Oilers celebrate some more. You say it's a holiday where we give thanks. <laughs> Bum Phillips, as he said, I don't mind the short week as long as it's not a long day, but the length of the day belongs to the far sidelines. The long shadows grow on the cowboy bench. Campbell, 196 yards today, unofficial.
officially, that would be one shy of Montgomery's best rushing effort of this NFL season, the Philadelphia running back with 197. And now it's just formation fall down and let the clock run. Tom Phillips, Oilers are going to be the first 10 game winner in the NFL. They've come north to Dallas and for them a sweet victory as you mentioned at the top of the show Merlin for so many reasons. Well they felt that they had been treated a little shabbily sometimes even by their own press. They are genuinely proud of what they have done in this year. They fought very hard for their victories. They fought hard for this victory. It did not come easily either. And it's time perhaps that they be recognized for their success. Bob Phillips you got to love the man. What he is absolutely unique among NFL coaches. Three, two, one, the final gun. Thanksgiving Day in Texas belongs to the Houston Oilers. Houston 30, Dallas 24. We'll be right back at Texas Stadium after this word. Take care of your car at Kmart. Our automotive service centers care. Now here's something that anyone can use. Our best quality 40-piece standard and metric socket wrench set. A combination one-quarter and three-eighths drive with a full unconditional duration warranty. Just $17.88 now through November 24th at Kmart Automotive Centers across the U.S. where quality car products are Kmart priced.